Welcome to the IVF Journey with Dr. Michael Chapman, the podcast for couples who struggle with infertility and want to fulfill their dreams of becoming parents. In this podcast, you'll learn actionable strategies to deal with infertility from Dr. Michael Chapman, or Prof as he's affectionately known. Prof is the co-founder of IVF Australia and is a leading Australian infertility specialist who has helped over 3,000 couples realize their dreams of becoming parents. To access previous episodes packed with ideas, solutions and tips that actually work, head over to Dr. Chapman's IVF podcast on iTunes. You can also ask questions by contacting Dr. Chapman's rooms on 1800 111 483 or by emailing him michael.chapman at ivf.com.au. That first cry of a baby born after the long journey of IVF remains one of the most beautiful experiences in the world. As an obstetrician and an IVF specialist, I've had the privilege of experiencing this over many thousands of times in my long career, but I still remain moved by each baby's first cry. It signifies the end of a long journey and the beginning of a new life. This is Professor Michael Chapman, co-founder of IVF Australia and host of the IVF Journey podcast. Thanks for tuning in. To access all the previous episodes, head over to my website, www.theivfjourney.com and select IVF Journey Podcast from the navigation menu. You'll also be able to find the various services that we provide at IVF Australia. Okay, one of the most frequent questions that I get asked by patients is, what are my chances of success? It's not an easy question to answer because there are so many factors involved with it. In terms of IVF, it's clear that age makes a difference. It's the biggest determinant of the chances of success. So with IVF, looking at the Australian database, if you start an IVF cycle, your chances at the age of 30 of taking home a baby from the first cycle is around 27%. If you're 35, it drops to 22-23%. By the time you're 40, it's just over 10% from one embryo transfer. That's from the time that you start a cycle. Now, when you go on the internet and you look at various clinics, websites, and in fact, even the, the ANZARD, the Australian database for IVF, much of what is written expresses them per embryo transfer and those rates are significantly higher and the reason is that something in the order of 20% of women don't get to an embryo transfer even though they started injections. So one in five women won't get to an embryo transfer. Reasons for that are that your ovaries don't respond to the medication the doctor has prescribed, that when we go to collect the eggs we don't find any or when we get to fertilize the eggs, the next morning we find that none of them have fertilized. And finally, when we grow the fertilized eggs on, there's a percentage of embryos that don't move forward, they don't divide. So there are many little hurdles to overcome before you get to an embryo transfer. So where I said a 30-year-old has a 27% chance of a baby from the time of starting a cycle, If you take that 30-year-old who gets to an embryo transfer, you're already over 30% chance of a cycle, nearer 32% chance of taking home a baby. So interpreting results is not always simple when you're looking at the internet. Your doctor is probably the best person to work that out because not only will they take your age into account, but also other factors, the blood tests that they've performed on you, the ultrasounds that they've performed on you will all add in to making a diagnosis and making a good prediction of what your chances of success are. What I can say is that in the last 15 years, that 30-year-old I talked about earlier with a 32% chance of a pregnancy per embryo cycle today, 
I would have been saying to her that she barely had a 20% chance of a pregnancy 15 years ago. So things continue to improve. Those success rates which you go looking for on the internet are dependent on what the clinic chooses to put in in their numbers. There is no standardised process, although the Fertility Society of Australia and the ACCC watch carefully to make sure that clinics aren't making exaggerated claims. The selection of data that's put on websites can present a very positive picture if those groups that are chosen uh, have a high risk of pregnancy. So a clinic that chooses patients under 35 years of age and talks about their pregnancy rates, they sound much better than a clinic that uses all their data, which in Australia would mean that 70% of their patients will be over 35, and that's far more realistic. So being observant of what the small print is, is very important. Other factors that can influence the pregnancy rates are what stage the clinic puts the embryos back in. While 80% of clinics in Australia now predominantly put them in at day five, there are still some clinics that are putting the embryos back on day two or three. The reason that we changed to blastocysts is that those embryos have chosen themselves to be the best embryos, that in the laboratory they've grown on, whereas at day two transfers we really don't know whether that particular embryo was going to go forward and create a blastocyst. So putting day five embryos improves the pregnancy rate per embryo transfer. The other thing that improves pregnancy outcomes for blastocysts is if they have been screened for genetic abnormality. And again, clinics that include genetically screened embryo in their overall data are falsely elevating their pregnancy rates. So buyer beware. Interpreting success rates is a difficult situation. And the importance of asking your specialist what your chances are, taking into account all of the information, is vital. And don't forget that you can access all the previous episodes by going to our website www.theivfjourney.com and select IVF Journey Podcast from the navigation menu. Thank you for listening to The IVF Journey with Dr. Michael Chapman, the podcast which helps couples negotiate their way through the IVF journey all the way to parenthood. You can also ask questions by contacting Dr. Chapman's rooms on 1800 111 483 or by emailing him michael.chapman at ivf.com.au.